A friend of mine did some work for me. It was below par, to say the least. I knew that this guy was capable of doing better work. I knew that he also had a fragile ego. So I was trying to think of what is the most sensitive way in which I can share this information with him. Because I wanted him to do my work over. I was going to pay him for what he did. But I needed my work done right. But I was afraid that I would hurt his feelings. I was very, very meticulous in how I approached him. And I said, let me share this with you. You know I care about you. And that you're a very talented and gifted person. And you and I both know that what you have given me is not a true reflection of your talents and abilities. And I'm saying, let's go back in the studio and do this again. And he said to me, I'm going to forget you ever said that. I was wiped out. He never spoke to me again. Now, when you decide to act, you're going to have some people like that. We're no longer friends. I lost sleep over that, ladies and gentlemen. I said, I can't believe that. I, I remember st sitting up one night looking at the phone. I said, I got to call him. He said, no. Then I said, no, forget that. I called, man, look here, we've been knowing each other too long to allow this to come between us. He said, don't call me anymore. And hung up. And then I, I wanted to think about how, what can I do to make it up to him? And then something came to me less. What do you have to prove? See, many things we don't do is, is because of the fact we want people to like us. There's some necessary losses in life. When you decide acting in your best interest, you're going to lose some friends. Everybody's not going to approve of you. There's some people that won't like you. Who do you think you are? You're arrogant. What do you think you can do? You think you can get away with that? You're selfish. Thanks, I got that. It's my life. And so what I'm saying to you is that as you begin to look out on your life, this is challenging. This is not easy, acting. So what are the things that we can begin to do to harness our will? Number one, you've got to bring it out and look at it. You've got to take the power out of it. You've got to expose it to the truth. And the truth is that it has no power over you. So write down something you want to act on, but for some reason that you've been holding back and look at it. The next thing is, ask yourself the question, is it helping you to continue to put it off? If it's an asset for you to continue to, to procrastinate, then continue to do that. But if it's a liability for you, if it's causing you some mental and some emotional challenges or perhaps a financial problem, look at that. Examine that for what it is. Next step, ask yourself, what's blocking you? What's preventing you from acting? Why don't you have the courage to handle that? Why won't you face that? What are you running away from? What kind of avoidance behavior are you engaged in? So what is the worst thing that can happen? I want you to visualize that, experience that, feel the nervousness and the discomfort. And the more you run it in your mind, the less power that it will have. When we look out on our lives, you ask the question, what are you going to do? Look at, as you think about this that you know you need to handle, what are you going to do? And then write down three strong reasons on why you know you must take action. And be explicit and descriptive in your reasons because your reasons have power. Your reasons will drive you. When you have doubt, when your faith becomes weak, your reasons will fortify your faith. When you have an inner conversation, say, no, don't do that. Your reasons will become your rod and your staff to comfort you, to take you through those challenging moments. So write down your reasons. And what you will find, that when you decide to act, when you decide to take life on, and let me warn you, it can be painful, it will be uncomfortable, and that's where the growth is. When you're uncomfortable, when you're stretching out, when you're taking life by the collar, you're going to get thrown to the ground again and again and again. But when you have determination and you know that what you're doing is right, it gives you your life, it gives a special meaning and power to you, you will have some power from on high. You will discover some things about yourself that will begin to electrify your personality. You'll begin to discover some things about you that you don't know you've got.
Some people wish they could do better, but some people expect to do better. Where are you on that? Let's look at what are the things we can do to increase our self-approval, our self-appreciation, our self-acceptance. Here's number one, love yourself. Make caring for you the highest priority in your life. Take care of you. Look out for what truly satisfies you. We're not taught to love ourselves. We're not taught to look out for ourselves. We're not taught to take care of ourselves, to become sensitive to our wants, to our needs, our, our desires. So make a conscious effort. Make you number one priority, your peace of mind. Your health is more important than your family and any and everybody. Because if you don't have peace of mind, if you don't have your health, you can't serve anybody. Don't neglect yourself. A lot of us, and particularly ladies, have been groomed to be sacrificial lambs, putting their dreams on the back burner in deference to their children's dreams or their husband's dreams or their family's dreams, and forget about themselves. And then become resentful and angry and bitter. So start taking care of yourself, looking out for you. Develop a health plan. Your health is all you got. So start taking care of you, eating nutritious meals, willing to exercise your body, taking care of this body, loving yourself. So do some good stuff for yourself on purpose. Take some time out for you. I have some good things I do for me. One of the things I enjoy that I do, I take spiritual baths. My assistant introduced me to someone called Sister Sarah who gave me my first spiritual bath. I never heard of this before. She told me about it. And I said, come on, come on, Regina, spiritual bath. And um, Sue, my secretary's husband, named Larry, he said, a spiritual bath for $50, I'll give you a spiritual shower. <laughs> but I play soft music. I've taped some of my favorite music. I play, I burn a candle. And I have different oils that I put in the tub of hot water. And I have flowers that I picked. And I put, I like, you know, I saw Coming to America, you know, Eddie Murphy. <laughs> You know, they were sprinkling little flowers on the ground. So it gives me a feeling of royalty. So I, I sprinkle these flowers in the water and I soak. I like doing that. And I soak and sometimes I read or just relax and enjoy the music and just cool out. That's my time for me. Put the answering service on. I just block out some time for me. I'm into meditation. I've been working and, and exercising now just doing some things for me, taking care of myself mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, and physically. You can't develop and manifest your greatness. You can't be a high achiever if you don't feel good. You don't take care of yourself. So I'm taking care of me. And then you know what? It takes the edge off your life. It helps you to manage things rather than allowing them to manage you. Gives you more personal power to deal with stuff. Take care of you. Now here's something else I suggest for you. Become aware of what your needs are and develop compassion toward yourself despite your human defects. Develop compassion for yourself despite your human defects. You will never be perfect. Hello. You will never be perfect. You're human. You've made a lot of mistakes. You've done a lot of dumb, stupid things. Guess what? You're not through yet. <laughs> You're going to do some more. Hurry up and get it over with. <laughs> it's all right. You got to learn to be gentle with yourself. Make it all right. What you don't know, mistakes that you make, it's okay. Handle it. Learn from the experience. Decide that you are going to whatever you become involved in to be up front, to be true to yourself. Are you getting what you need out of it? And be upfront with people and tell them what you need from them. Don't assume that they know. Don't say, I thought you knew. No, tell people up front, here's what I need from this in order for this to work for me. Be up front with your stuff. Tell them up front so they're not surprised later on. So your feelings aren't hurt later on. See, if they tell you up front they can't do it, now you know you can keep on stepping. But tell people up front, here's what I want. In order for me to play this game with you, if we're going to dance, 
This is what I got to get out of it. See, if you don't take care of your needs, guess what? You will always have that nagging song in the back of your mind. Say, well, when do I get mine? 